watching Millie and her problem solving. You know, that's what we, we talk about here and you know, we talk a lot about interrogating reality to solve problems. And you know, we call it problem solving, but I think you have to be able to do one to get the other. And some of the things that were really amazing that she did, number one, I, I was in the role play. So so for me, I was, you know, trying to say, well, you know, you keep saying I can afford it, you keep saying I can and she just kept coming back to there was no doubt for me who was in control. She wasn't rude or abrasive about it, but she was very confident. She knew she was in control and it exuded to me. She asked me so many questions, it was like a puzzle. It's like when she got there, there were a bunch of pieces on the table. Well, by the time we she asked me enough questions, I answer them, it started to come together. And then I could see the framework. Why did I need to make sure I had this? How much did it take to run the house? All the things that she talked about, but you can't solve problems without asking questions. You know, wouldn't it be something to show up to, something that's going on and go, all right, let me make a decision. Everybody's like, you don't even know what's going on yet. Like you even asked one question, like slow down. Let's figure out who's doing what. Why is he here? I was a social worker for many years. I always tell people I trained them like, you don't even have any information. You made a decision before you even got there. You decided what he or she did or didn't do. Ask. Interrogate the reality. If they're doing something that you think you think they're lying to you, challenge them on it. But she did a phenomenal job. What she also did in her role play was answer the phone because when you're managing agents, they're going to call. She didn't go like, uh, she because that's what she does. So she's like, excuse me, it's one of my eight. She explained what it was because it's real life. We don't have to walk in this appointment like, oh my God, my life shuts down now. What am I going to do? Your professional life does not. Your personal baggage, keep it in the car. Hard to solve problems when you bring your problems into the home. Leave your problems in the car. I don't care what's going on. I didn't, the client didn't care what's going on with me. It was a problem. That's not their business. I'm there to help. So as you watch Millie in her problem solving in my situation, what she puts together, I want you to see how great she is the questions. And any time that I try to take control, she stopped me. When I try to take her down a path, which wouldn't solve the problem, she redirected me and was like, stop, I'm not doing that. No, I'm going to get back on this. So she's phenomenal and, and I know it'll help you. Got it, yeah. got it. Now let me ask you this, um, Sean. What are you looking to do? God forbid you don't come home tomorrow. What happens to the house? I leave it to my kids. Okay. I mean, I, I have I, my attorney, I have a friend of mine, he drew up some paperwork like a will so they get to keep my house if something okay. happens to me. Do they want the house? Um... I don't know that either one of them, what I told them is they should sell it, you know, because even now that I've refinanced it, the appraisal came in pretty good, so I, and it keeps, you know, going up a little bit, so I think we're in a pretty good place as far as what I owe on it, and I, so I don't think they'd keep it and move here, no. And what is the monthly um, mortgage on the house right now? What am I paying and everything? Yes. Um, probably about $2,300. Okay, so just, just, okay, 2300 okay. How's your health? I'm in good health, actually. Okay. What does that mean? That means that I take no medications. Um, Ever? I took cholesterol medication maybe 15 years ago for like three or four months. Um, okay. I don't smoke, don't drink, don't use drugs. I haven't done that in, since I was in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I try to work out a lot, try to eat decent. And I, and I, don't, I don't go to the doctor a lot, but I don't have any health issues that I'm aware of. Okay. So looking at all of this, I'm just trying to you know paint a, a, a picture of what it would look like in the event that you were no longer here. So we talked about that you you don't want to be a financial burden to anyone in your family. I don't be a financial burden to anybody. To anyone. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and you would still have, you will still owe on your home. Correct. So what we would want to do, is, if there's a plan, it's called Critical Protection pa uh, Plan. Mm -hmm. It's What it does is that it allows your kids to save the equity of the home. Since okay. they most likely won't be living here they would sell it they would sell it so what we want to do is just have a coverage enough so that we make sure that the kids can grieve because you're no longer here mm -hmm. and still make that monthly payment for your home until they can sell the house does that make sense yeah it does okay and now let's be realistic no house sells overnight and no one's looking no to sell no house. i tried to do real estate years ago i know that they don't Okay, so what I would suggest is that we look at, so because my job is I'm going to try to see if we can cover as much as we possibly can. What was the the mortgage? How much I own the house total? Yes. Now I'm probably down to 170. 170, okay. Yeah. So, but I think it's worth probably 250 right now. So 250. So you got some good equity yeah. there. Okay. And I want them to keep that, the yes. difference. You know so this I mean? is what we're going to cover. We're going to save the equity. So we're mm -hmm. going to spend a little money to get 
to save this for the kids. Does that make sense? So what do you mean? What would it do for them? What do so you here's what you're going to do. One, they're going to be able to pay. They're going to get a check. Okay. Okay. And they're going to be able to make that payment, monthly payment for your mortgage and keep the lights on because yeah. we still got to keep the lights on in the house because yeah. we can't sell a house with no lights on. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Well, yeah, to keep it heated so nothing it's you know, correct. gets cold. And so they'll do that until they put it on the market. Once they put it on the market, they're going to pay off the house and they're going to get the equity. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, as long as they can afford it. Uh, well, listen, that's why I'm here. Okay. That's why I'm doing the shopping. You're, you're done shopping. Does okay. that make sense? <laughs> you keep saying that, so I guess that has to make sense. But I, you know, I don't want to do that. I, I wanna... promise you. Okay. All, right. All right, let's just look at everything, okay? okay? So that's what we're going to do, and then um, we'll see what else we have left over for final expense. Okay? So how much would they get if, I know we're gonna, you're, you're going to look First at it, but how much do you think they, you're looking at, you're thinking they would need to protect so, the house? You're saying that the house, to run the house every month is three thousand yes. dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Roughly. Roughly. Okay. I, I'm gonna say it's not gonna be as much because they probably mm -hmm. won't be living in the house. So let's say just to be on the safe side, let's do twenty six hundred a month. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. We're gonna times that by twelve. Twenty six. Let me make sure I add it right. So it's thirty one thousand. Now, what would you say? What does it typically? How long does it typically um, take to? To sell or to sell a house around here. I mean, I think if it goes good at six months, and it could be up to a year. I guess six if months. it's priced wrong, it could be more than that. But I think about a, I think a year's fair. Okay, so and, let's and, to be on the safe side. Let's do two years. I always like to do three, but we can do two. Your kid's pretty smart. They know how to sell. They know who to talk they're, to. They're much smarter than me. Yes. Okay. Good. Well, I'm glad you at least I'm, <laughs> made I'm them smarter. That. Yes. Yes. I'm aware of that. <laughs> That's what we hope, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you said that the house can go for two fifty mm -hmm. minus the one seventy. Let's say we're talking about it says eighty. Let's say eighty thousand worth in, in mm -hmm. equity, a little less than that, maybe a little more, depending on when you you know we were to sell the house. Okay. When I say we, I would help your children through all of this. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now the minimum. We would be looking at is to cover is sixty two thousand, okay, okay. Um, and to make it affordable. But if you have other expenses, plus we want to do funeral expenses, are you going to get cremated or are you going to get buried no, with a whole bunch of flowers? I'm getting buried. You're getting buried, okay. So then we're going to have to add a little bit more on that because I don't know when you're going to go six and eight around that. So does that make sense? Well, I had to put the house. I mean, that part does make sense. I haven't thought about that. Um, I don't want them to, I am, you know, again, I, you, I, I know you're looking at everything today. I got to make sure, like I said, that, that, that's, I don't want to lose the money that's in the house. Okay. So yes. Excuse me one minute. Hold on a second. Yes. Yes. You're with a, you're with a client right now. Okay. Yes. I think you want to go with what coverage? The living benefits are always the best because God forbid something happens. They have some protection. Yes. Okay. If you need anything else, just give me a call. I do apologize. We have a lot of it's agents, okay. so okay. we got to help them out. Make sure that we're protecting all the families. Okay. That's no problem. Okay. So let's look at these numbers, and then let's find something that fits the budget. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. we want to have a car that has four wheels, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe the car that you want to drive. What's your favorite kind of car? What I get if I could afford it? If you could afford it. Ferrari. Ferrari. Do you drive a Ferrari now? No. But you do drive a car, right? Yes. Okay. Why? I can't afford a Ferrari. Because you. You drive a car because... Oh, I drive a car now because I need a car. Exactly. If so I meant why I don't have a Ferrari, I can't afford a Ferrari. That's the only reason I don't have a Ferrari. So what I'm saying, and my point is that we're still going to find you gotcha. a car. Because you okay. still need the four wheels. Does Correct. that make sense? Yes, I still okay. need a vehicle. All right, you still need a car. Yes. We still need to okay. protect your family. Got it. All right, so let's look at this. Now, I'm looking at America, which is a, a really great company. Mm -hmm. um, let's make sure that they cover your age group. Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> I'm saying. You can say it if you want. I'm, just... I'm saying that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first try to see what it looks like to cover your home mortgage, mm -hmm. okay? Because that's what you would qualify for. So I'm always going to show you the maximum amount. Doesn't mean you have to take it, okay? Because mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your face, although you're going to tell me anyway because you, you're just that type of person. Mm -hmm. But I'll know whether or not that makes sense, okay? Mm-hmm. Oh. Not that much. You don't need that much. Your house oh, that's that a lot. No. <laughs> I know. I'll take that though if it's, you can give it for the same price. 
Right? I can get a Ferrari with that. You can definitely get a Ferrari. You can get one for me as well. You can get one for a lot of people. You know? <laughs> so you said, what, what was your mortgage? 30 years? Yeah, but when I refined it, that's why I went up. I brought it down to 15 years. Perfect. That's why my interest rate went okay. up a little bit. All right, so we have 15 years. So I don't even have a total, but I mean, I have a little less than 15 years on okay. it. Okay. All right, so 15 years, that puts you at 75? 75. Okay. So, here's the thing. Do you have longevity in your family? Um, parents still alive? Parents are now both deceased um, okay. in, in late 70s. Um, so, my grandparents, I guess, same deal, right around 80. I mean, they don't, they don't live to, my family doesn't live to 110. Okay. But, you know, late 70s, early 80s, somewhere okay. in there, there we're not, you know. Okay, so well, I wouldn't we, consider us a longevity family, I guess, to answer your question. All right, so here's the thing. You, your mortgage is only 15 years, okay, which is great. I'm showing you this price, but here's the thing. After that, then we have no coverage, so we have to cover you for mm -hmm. something. So we're going to have to do, we're going to have to have a plan here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that you have enough coverage so that we can do this plan here, plan mm -hmm. A, but yeah. we also make sure maybe this plan is a whole life. Okay. Okay. And the mm -hmm. reason why we need a whole life is because if your house gets paid off and I'm, you're still alive, yeah, that goes forever. Right? Correct. I read, correct. I read about that. And here's the thing: your kids are young, mm -hmm. and I know I'm sure they love you, but God forbid if you were to get cancer or something, they're not going to mm -hmm. be able to take care of you at this yeah. age. So what you could do with this whole life is you're able to take the money up front mm -hmm. so that you can do whatever it is that you need to take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that plan together. All right. All right. So. So I hope you really got the sense in watching Millie and what she done. Again, this is, so if you want to go to the whole sales experience, Millie's never sold any life insurance. I mean, I don't think she'd call herself some kind of crazy salesperson, but she sure as heck knows how to sit down and ask some people questions and get to the bottom of something and solve some problems. And again, you can't be the problem solver if you're not in control. She took control. Now you get ready to watch Brian Mendenhall. And, you know, Brian does something in here. I always like to watch, again, I, 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 I miss very much. We'll say, what's the hardest part about running the company? I'm like, oh, running the company, I work with great agents, work with great carriers, work with great managers, great vice presidents. I mean, I just try to bust my behind as hard as I can to outwork everybody so I keep everybody's respect. That's that. But I miss m meeting with clients. You know, I miss it. And, and I love it. And, uh, you know, when I was watching Brian, you know, go through and I watched it and I had an opportunity to watch it live and when he he didn't pretend to paint a picture for the couple in the role play about what would happen the husband died. He 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 was so detailed. By the way, this that is what happens. I mean just just so you know, so detailed in his approach. You know, I used to hear people say, you need to kill the client, you know, talk about it, but they didn't know how to do it. It was very salesman-y. And Brian just literally very methodically, low tone, just explain the minute the husband said, try to, or the wife, he's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, he's not it, he's dead. He's dead. And then when they kind of laugh it off because it's uncomfortable laughter, he's like, this is not a laughing matter. That's problem solving. You know, there ain't no doubt who's in control of that appointment. And guess what? Everybody that filled this thing out, that's what they're, nope, they're definitely afraid of. What's going to happen if something happens to whichever person or both of us and we don't have any coverage? Yeah. That's what they're terrified of. So if we know that's what they're terrified of and we can't go get it out of them, we put ourselves in a tough spot. What Brian did, everybody can do. There was nothing magical about it, nothing that, re that requires any innate ability or gift. He just hit the people straight, problem solved, talk about interrogating reality. And he did it and kept control the entire time. And what's the house worth? I know you got a real screaming deal. So what, what's the house worth? <laughs> um, we're thinking like just over 200 now. Yeah. Probably like it pays a little bit higher. So, so just so you know, I don't know. This is your first house, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when they do the appraisals, they just do them to make the deal work. So sometimes the house can be worth a little more, but they just do it and to the point where, okay, this makes sense. We got the deal. Yep. So. I'm assuming it's probably worth more than what you paid. You wouldn't pay what it's worth. Does that right. make sense? So let's say it's maybe worth 225 now. That sounds about right. Here, here's what I will tell you though. Back in 2007, I don't know this area per se, but I know this house was probably going for about 300K because the market was booming. 
What does that mean for you guys? We hope the market stays booming or booms again. Well, the market's gonna boom again, and so it, it has to happen. Right. So what that really means right now, if you look at the future and the big picture, today, day one, you start in your buying this house, you typically have a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. Okay. It's huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want you to picture this. So see this bag? You guys have a basement here? Yeah. Uh, you see this bag? Yep. It's got a hundred grand in it. <laughs> and this is gonna be stashed away somewhere in the basement, right? Yep. Well, the thing is, if we don't have a plan to protect the mortgage in the event of something happened to one of you, you know where that hundred grand goes? Out the door. Well, no, no, it goes back to the bank. Back to they the get bank. to keep your hundred grand and resell the house to somebody else and get paid again. So we want to make sure we have something in place, okay? Now, I want to ask you guys this. This is important because a lot of people don't have a plan. And I believe if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. I'm going to ask you a serious question. And, and I like to be hypothetical right now because this isn't your real situation today. But let's, let's act like it was. Mm -hmm. Bill, what time do you normally get home from work? Go home right around a little after six. A little bit after six? Mm -hmm. What's the latest you'd ever come in the house? The latest I'd ever come in, like yeah. after work? After work, what's the latest you get in? Seven o'clock sometimes. Yeah. And then you guys probably eat, you wait You wait for them to get home to eat, right? Yeah. All right, so Jasmine, now it's 7.30 and Bill hasn't come in, you haven't heard from him. At what point would you maybe shoot him a text message or call him and say, hey, you're running late, where, where you at, babe? At what point would you do that? Probably right at 7.30, I'm here. 7.30, you're yeah. like, what's, what's up, man? Get home, <laughs> right? Late. Yeah. So let's say now it's, it's 8 o'clock. What, what do you do at that point? Maybe call him a couple more times or yeah, maybe, maybe start, call his job. Maybe call his job, right? Yeah. yeah. Now it's 8.30. You still haven't heard from him. You reach out to family at this point. You're starting to really panic at this point and getting a little bit upset, right? I don't want to say the key <laughs> word, but you're getting, you're getting upset, right? You get a knock at the door. It's the Norwich Police Department when you open the door. They hold up a bloody driver's license and they say, ma'am, can you identify this person? And it's Bill, it's your husband. What would you do? No. What would your plan be? We don't have a plan, do we? Yeah, I guess do me no a favor. After that. You can't talk to him because he's dead. <laughs> no, it's not. This is a, not a laughing matter. I'm being dead serious. Yeah. And the reason I could be dead serious now is because this is hypothetical. But this happens way too much. So many people are dying every single day without a plan. Without a plan. What would you do? I guess I could ask some family if they could take me in, but I can't afford the house. There's no way that you can stay here. No. Living on the couch. Do you see where you should probably have this type of coverage? Yeah. And what I, what I really think we should do is, I'm gonna show you a regular mortgage protection plan. And because there's a lot of accidents, I literally on the way here, I saw an accident. I prayed for the person, but I guarantee they probably didn't live. So I'd probably add a little small accidental policy on there as well. So you'll have the house paid and some additional money if you pass that way. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So let me go over this product I want to explain to you guys. Um, since you have nothing going on health-wise, I am going to show you Americo, the okay. company I was telling you about. And hands down, their product cannot be beat right now, okay? All right, so wrapping up the video that you got to see that wrapping up what Brian did, you know, that's it. I mean, guys, you know, you want to talk about pulling the emotion from somebody. You want to pull, talk about hugging on their, their, tugging on their heartstrings. I mean, this is, it's what we do and you do it by asking questions. So I, I hope as you reflect back on it, you know, you really think about, am I getting there? You know, let's say you're here and the client's here when you, you know, and the client never moves from here, you never move from here. Well, you got to be in here to go ahead and make the sale and close the sale, which means you're sharing, they're sharing, you're challenging, they're coming towards you. We're all trying to come to this common goal, and Brian shows you how to do that. A lot of people get here, they're there, and go, ah, I didn't want the life insurance. No, they wanted it, just not from you. And that's, you know, and I've said it about myself, you know, make changes. 
So I want to bring now on, uh, you know, I want to help intro Matt Walker, who's a, uh, one of the newer agents we have. And again, the, not to continue to beat this drum, but talk about the differences in people. And Matt's dealing with a lady in this role play. She's lost her husband. She's young. She didn't think she'd lose her husband at this young age. And Matt, even his body language, he, I mean, it, you know, we're not going to do, you know, 37 of his show, but I mean, the body language he had knowing that here's this young lady who's lost her husband, and even when he said not to rehash these painful memories, something along those lines, you know, I'm respectful of it, but you did lose your husband. And he's feeling in the role play this is purely a budget deal for her. But yes, she wants life insurance. She knows she needs life insurance. But inside somewhere, I mean, he asked it multiple times. So what is the, what would be the issue? Is it a budget issue? And then finally she goes, yeah, I just, like, I'm, I want to afford it. And by the way, people don't jump up and down and go, yay, I have budget issues. Let me tell you about them. They usually don't. They act like they don't. It's easier to say no than for them than to bring it up. But if you bring it up nicely, we all have budget issues. Everybody has to understand it, make sense. It, you, you let people know how normal it is to think about how much some, how much something's actually going to cost before you purchase it for the majority of people in the world. So he just does a really good job of his demeanor, his question asking, him continue to stay on the same track when he thought it was something, he didn't leave it alone. He got to the bottom of the answer. Again, we talk about problem solving. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it's funny. If you think about interrogating reality, you think of some, some bad, you know, CSI episode or something, and they're interviewing the heck out of them, they're interrogating them, and they're waterboarding somebody. And, his interrogating reality was very much with his body language here, her over there, hands close to him, watching everything she was doing, a very methodical interrogation with the reality. Um, and, and again, you have to know who you're talking to and what's going to be productive and what's not. So I, I know Matt will help you out a great deal when you watch this uh, next clip. Protected in the process. Um, and, and if nothing happens, like we said, you're going to get it all back and pay the house off early. Um, now, you obviously said that, you know, you could... You could save about 400 a month, mm -hmm. so that seems pretty reasonable. Would you say that that plan seems to be within your budget? Yeah, I can definitely afford it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, of course, I want to make sure uh, it it is the best price out there. Uh, so would you mind if I just held on to this and, and shopped it around a little? Okay, so um, by the way, so there's a couple other plans. Now, would you say that, um, so you want to look at a few other plans, would you say that it's because of, you said it's price, right? Mm -hmm. That's, so you're... So now, let me just challenge you with this. Now, if you find a plan that's a little bit less, this is a savings plan, right? It's built in. If you find a, little, a plan that's a little bit less out there, which I'm going to be honest with you, we work with a lot of insurance carriers, and America is, when it comes to the cash back there, and the living benefits, you're not going to find another company out there that, that offers that. Um, now, if you, if you do find something that's a little bit cheaper, really, at the end of the day, all you're doing is just saving a little bit less. You're not going to pay the house off five years early, which you really liked, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, okay. So if it's a budget thing, is is it? Now we said you could you could save 400 a month. If it's a budget thing, um, we could take a step back and look at a couple other plans, and we could always we could always upgrade the plan later. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. Um, you're thinking about it now, right? Mm -hmm. You're thinking about protecting the house because you got the card in the mail, right? You got the card in the mail. The insurance guy's here, so you're thinking about it now. You're busy right now, right? Definitely. Like with the kids and work. I mean, how many hours are you work in a week? At least 55. 55 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest. I mean, you're not going to spend that. Life goes on. In other words, when I when I leave here, you got the kids. You, you got you got the day off today. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe you'll look. Maybe you'll shop around a little bit today. But after that, life goes on. And I can tell you, I've been doing this for about six years. And I can honestly say that. The majority of the people that I meet with that tell me that they're going to think about it and shop around, they never end up doing something. And the last thing we want to have happen is during that time frame, something happens to you. I mean, you know, and I don't want to, break, you know, rehash painful memories, but I mean, look what happened with your, you know, with your husband. You know, would you ever want that to ever, would you ever want your, your kids to be in that predicament and your, 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 your parents? Yeah, you know? I understand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I, I, I take what I do very seriously. So I, the last thing I want to have happen is I leave here today and something happens to you and then, and, and you're not protected. I, I, I take that, I take responsibility for that. Um, so, so can you see how, so if it's a budget thing, if we need to scale back, that's fine. But do you, can you see how 
not having any coverage just really simply is an option for you. Um, you, you really can't afford to go any longer without having any coverage. You're right. Um, so is it is it a budget thing or? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, I can afford these, but I, I do need to be absolutely sure that I'm not overpaying. Okay. But if you're saying that I'm, if I shop around, I'm not going to find these these benefits then no, not not everything are... in one no, I'm a, I'm a hundred percent sure that you that you want and I by the way I encourage all my all the people that I sit with to go ahead and do research mm -hmm. after if you do find something that that's that does all of what we're trying to accomplish here and at a lower rate which actually wouldn't be possible you wouldn't be able to pay the house off five years earlier at a lower rate but um but if, if you did that's then you know no harm no foul but I'm, I'm, I can say with absolute certainty that there's just there's nothing else out there like this. Um, if it is a budget issue, maybe we need to scale back. But you did tell me you could save 400 a month. Mm -hmm. um, but if if that 141 dollars is a little bit more than you want to commit to right now, here's the deal. I would feel better if you at least have some protection. In the meantime, I agree. With you, you go ahead and think about it. You can <laughs> think about it. You can look shop around a little bit. Let's put something in place now um, that you're absolutely comfortable with. And if you say three, four months down the road, decide, hey, you know what, this is this is you know this is nothing for me. I can I can I can afford to pay more. I got no problem coming back and upgrading the plan. Heck, we can even do it over the phone. Okay. So I asked myself if you were sitting with Matt Walker, would you have felt comfortable? Would you have answered this question? Would have bought like would you have bought life insurance from? Did he solve the problem? Did did he did he solve the problem that the client was facing? Did he interrogate reality to do that? Now I'm going to bring on Brian Mendenhall. We're going to watch this clip, and you're going to you're going to see him do his problem solving. And there's so many neat things that he does. At one point, literally takes his bag to articulate for me in the role play how much equity is in the house, and it's a bag of money. It says here and here is this amount of money. And and he just really continues to point out, hey, I know you're saying that. I love. I you know, I talked about you know the budget. And he said, okay. At the same time. I do know your kids are the most important thing in the world to you, right? He just kept bringing me back to what was really important, bringing me back to why I filled the form out, bringing me back to what I actually needed. So, you know, just just problem solving is an emotional thing. And again, you have to have the information to be able to, to, to be able to be qualified to solve the problem. And the last thing I'll say about it is if the person doesn't trust you, you haven't been forthright, you haven't been direct, you haven't controlled the situation, if they think that you're untruthful or if they think you're weak. I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you think somebody's weak or you let them solve, help solve a problem for you, especially when it involves your children or other dependents, you're not going to do that. So, uh, you know, as, as you get to see what Brian's doing here, and I think it'll blow your mind and also anybody can do it. So you got about $80,000 worth of equity. I would think so, yeah. That, and this is important and I'm glad you already know this. It seems like you already know, but in the event something happened to you, Mm -hmm. If the kids didn't have something protecting you, mm -hmm. that 80 grand mm -hmm. that's in this bag would be stashed somewhere in the basement. They wouldn't have access to it because the bank would not only take the house that you keep talking about, they would also take what? Would take the 80 grand. The 80 grand. And they wouldn't work with my kids on it at all or not, anybody else. Not, not at all. Not at all. So that 80 grand would be gone. Let's make sure that we have something that would actually help you out. Now, and is this, I, I'm just, and again, I don't want to jump ahead, Brian, I appreciate the information, but if it ends up being too much, I just can't do it. You know what I mean? I want to be straight up with you. I don't want to mislead you. Sure. I mean, I, I, the, that, what you're telling me, I, I got it. I need to do something. I know that. But yeah. I'm just, I know I'm not 22 either, so I'm just, you So, know. Let, let, let me ask you this question, Sean, because you say it has to be affordable. I, I, I understand that. At the same time, what I know is most important to you is your kids. Yeah. Is that right? That's, they're my world. Okay, so being that, I'm going to show you what it is. We can't change how old you are. Would you agree? I wish I could. So you are your age. Unless I we can go jump age. in the DeLorean and go back 88 miles per hour, age. it's not going to change. Me, every morning I get up, I realize I am my age. All right. So what I'm going to show you is a plan that will cover, it should cover all your concerns and more. Because there's things that you haven't thought about okay. being a single person. Mm -hmm. I'm about to enlighten you. And this, pro okay. this product will cover all of it. But more importantly, in the beginning, you mentioned to get your money back. Remember? Yeah, that's that was that was the most. To be honest, that was the most important thing on the form. If okay. I didn't say that, I wouldn't fill it out. Okay. So when you're saying you want to make sure it's in your budget, all this money is coming back to you. So it's essentially a savings it is. account. I just got to be able to put enough away. Okay. I got to be able to afford to put away every month. Let's take I a mean, look I, at it. You know. No matter what, Sean, I'll find something in your budget. Mm -hmm. So let's not worry about that. More importantly, let's make sure we get something. Okay. A lot of my clients will have champagne taste with beer money. 
Sometimes you gotta grab a beer. You I ask me beer. if I want to be beer. beer taste. I can't have I a beer right now. Taste. Hey, but if you gotta grab a beer, you gotta grab a beer. Okay. okay? Something is gonna be better than nothing. All right. So the first thing that that is huge about this product, it has living benefits. Okay. okay. Now, when you talked about life insurance, you don't like term insurance. <coughs> neither no. do I. But has no it has no living benefits like this program. Okay? okay. So what you weren't thinking about, you were only thinking about death. Dude, what if you came down with cancer like my aunt or my uncle? Are you still driving trucks? Dep I mean, depends on how sick I am. Probably not. They'd probably take me off the road anyway. Even if I could do it, they'd probably take me off the road. Yeah, let's be real. You, you come down with cancer, you're, even if you wanted to, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Physically able to. You're probably okay? right. You're probably right. Which means your income goes down from what you're making to now 60% of your income, correct? Mm -hmm. And it's only you paying the bills here. Correct. Some people end up living too long, Sean. You end up getting sick coming down with something. You live too long and start losing stuff. Mm. Does that make that's scary? Think about yeah, that. That makes sense. This product, in the event of any type of critical illness, they'll pay you a lump sum of a hundred percent of the face amount that we choose today, while you're still living with that critical illness. It could be any type of invasive cancer, any type of stroke, any type of heart attack. See, you're 45. My uncle just had a he just had a heart attack at 53. 53 is right around the corner for you. Mm -hmm. You just took out a commitment to your 75 years old of a 30-year mortgage. Yep. How good would it make you feel to know you're protected for any type and of stroke? And that would cover me the entire time. The entire 30 Whether years. Whether I was 46 or 72. Here's, here's the magic. You ready? Even 25 years from now, you're still 45 and healthy. They're going to lock you in at your age. Your price won't change. And you get to keep your coverage for 30 whole years. Cover this entire mortgage. Right. Any of these things in my 70s, I could get that benefit. Correct. Okay. All right. Next thing is chronic illness. Now this is crazy. Any type of any type of chronic illness where you're unable to take care of yourself, doing two out of the six daily living activities, bathing, dressing, eating, going to the toilet. There's like two more. If you can't do two of them, they're gonna again give you a hundred percent of the face amount of the policy. So they give me a hundred percent of the face amount of my policy. It's over if I get a hundred percent of the money. It's over. But if you I get, get all, all your money. money. Okay. And that means you don't make any more payments. Okay. Now this. Now you know it sounds like it. it it's, it almost sounds too good to be true, it right? It almost sounds too good to be true to me. But I don't know a lot about this stuff. I'm Sean, just saying that's it. Sean, I'll be, on, I'll be honest I think if you. more people that I worked with knew this, because I have to listen to these people at work all the time, and I don't read a lot. I read a little bit of real, about real estate, mm -hmm. and but I don't think I'm an expert. These people I work with think they're expert in life insurance, and, you know, I just think of anyway. But, okay, I'm no, listening no, no, to no, no. you. Hey, I'll tell, I'll tell you what. You're not lying to me. I'm here's looking the, in your eyes. Here, so you're not lying. Here's the deal, Sean. Okay. There was a training that they did on this yeah. before these pamphlets came out a couple months ago. I thought it was too good to be true myself, man. But here it's in writing. Because the return of premium sounds good, too good to be true, too. <laughs> it does. I mean, they give you all your money back, it, which it means, does. okay. But it's not. Okay. So you see it here in writing, right? No, I'm reading it. Now, now yep. here, here are the two things that I think about, the critical illness and terminal illness. My aunt would have qualified for both of these because really? terminal illness says if you, you're going to pass away in the next 12 months, your doctor says that. They're going to give you all the money up front. And this one says any type of invasive cancer. She didn't Got just it. have invasive cancer. She had life-threatening cancer. Invasive, anything under the skin, you're taking chemo, you're doing... That covers everything. You're covered. The last Got thing it. we want to get to, which is your most important thing, you want that money back, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Receive all your money back in the event that you don't ever use the coverage, meaning you don't die or you don't get sick. You mm -hmm. get 100% of your money back. Now, what they've done is they've showed you a 30-year-old covering just a hundred and fifty thousand dollar policy mm -hmm. here's his monthly payment okay you take that times 12 months times 30 years he gets back twenty four thousand seven fifty and just to do the math to make sure it's correct because i know you're the guy that wants to see the numbers mm -hmm. what's that 68 what 68, 75, 75 times 12 times 30 years is that the same thing they have twenty four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars this yeah. is how your program is going to work it's, it's just going to cost more because you're older Make sense? Yeah, it does. Let's take a look at the programs and find out which one makes the most sense for you, okay? So that wraps up our problem solving slash interrogating reality uh, episode. It, it, and I think that you have to think to yourself, I used to like to keep score. You know, how many questions did I ask? How many questions did I answer? The question game. Answer a question with a question. Whoever asks the most questions wins. And when you start thinking about clients, you're trying to interrogate the reality, you can't do that again. This, you can't be here and they can't be here. you got to be in here where it's emotional. You need to be direct with people. You need to ask questions other people won't ask. 
You need to paint that picture for people. And when somebody, as, as happened in a few of the episodes, when somebody maybe laughs off something you said, usually an uncomfortable laughter, you need to step in and say, uh, it's not a laughing matter. Now, I understand what you're saying, but it's really not a laughing ma matter. You have to ask yourself when you're in somebody's home, are you able to interrogate that reality? Because the idea is that somebody sat down some day, some night, filled out a form, sent it back to somebody they don't know, and that somebody's you. So when you get out to that house, they're putting a lot of trust and respect in the fact that you are going to be able to help them. And this Call the Close series shows you through these in-home uh, role plays, which are phenomenal, and you can see so many different people do it, you see what it looks like to have somebody knock on that door, make the appropriate initial contact, and then begin that problem-solving process through the interrogation of reality, asking a lot of questions. If somebody doesn't answer the question, they come right back and ask it again. So it appears you're saying this. It appears you say it's a budget issue. Hey, let me ask you something. At the same time, your kids are the most important thing in the world to you, aren't they? Yes. Okay, got it. So I'm answering a question with a question. I'm moving back. I'm not letting up. I'm not going to stop. So I know this episode will help you because it's going to take you to the next one. And without the appropriate problem solving through the interrogation of reality, you can never even get to the close. So I know it'll help you if you follow through with what you see in these videos.